Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Chargers Live on SportsNetUSA.net. And it's the playoff edition here at Don Johnson Court as your Cypress women, who are 21-7, and 9-3, and three, they finish in the OEC, are hosting in this second round playoff matchup against Ventura. The Pirates come in with a record of 20-8 and 8-4 and four out of the Western States Conference. Corey Nalen and Mark Pavlovich, we're just excited to have a wonderful ball game. Yeah, we really are. We had the opportunity to talk to the coaching staff of Ventura. What a lovely conversation, of course. When Serbian brothers get together, Corey Nalen, I mean, it's a conversation that lasts all night. And that's exactly what this was. You got uh, welcomed into the Serbian circle tonight because of your relationships with uh, that part of Europe, and it really is a coach that really cares about his student athletes. When you flip coaches over, though, they care. Coach B, first time in the playoffs, should be interested to see how she coaches now at her second season with a team that Corey Nalen says has a very good chance to come away with a state championship. And, and we know Coach B is not changing a thing. So we know she's gonna come out and running and gunning with her team. Kenya Edelhart will get the start. Point guard for the Pirates out of Lancaster. She's a 5'4 sophomore. Jasmine Glover is a 5'6 sophomore out of Valencia High School. Alicia Cruz Lisberg, who's 5'8 sophomore, El Camino Real. And the fourth guard, Sofia Torres Reyes, 5'6 sophomore from Buena High School. We'll talk about a little bit later her family history with the Pirates. And Kylie Gallick, the 5'11 sophomore, the double-double machine out of Buena High School, head coach Ned Merkitech, assisted by Robin Hester and Maria Christine. Cypress stars Joanna Stroud at the 5'4", 5'10", out of Santa Fe Springs High School. Alexia Alvarez, 5'3", out of Santa Barbara High. Jasmine Uli, another guard, 5'4", from Cerritos. Tal Trung gets the start tonight, 5'6", out of Rancho Alamitos, the tip controlled by Alvarez. And the fifth starter for Cyprus will be Ashley Hawkins, the co-player of the year from the OEC. So you see Cyprus in their white, blue, and gold trim on the sides. Ventura in their black unis, orange numbers at the elbow to Stroud. She's picked up strong the last five games. Here's Hawkins, got away with a travel off glass. And that's the way you start the ball game with the first two for Ashley. Full court pressure. Cruz Lisberg breaks it easily in the lane with the floater. She's got two. More like a runner. 2-2 two -two just started here. First quarter of this second round matchup. Alvarez looking down low to Stroud, working on Gallic. 13 on 13. Right block turns, uses glass, and they say she muscles too much. First personal, first team foul. Yeah, she really did. She used the body to get in there. So what she did is she basically used the body and an arm to clear the lane to make a move as we get a quick substitution by Cypress. Mia Williams, a 5'8 sophomore from Fullerton High School. 1-2-2 two, two on the full court press. Here's Edelhart, very quick with the ball. Also a 41% three-point shooter. In state, that's sixth. Torres Reyes launches a three and bottom. 5-2 Ventura. Hawkins guarded by Lisberg, Cruz Lisberg, and switches with Glover. Here's Alvarez in the lane. She's got to hit that one if they want to stay. Williams fights hard, and here's Torres Reyes. And Mark, that's one of the things that Cypress has to do. Once they get in the lane, they have to convert nine out of 10 shots in the lane. Well, the other thing they have to do, Corey, and I'm gonna be emphasizing it all night is rebound. Even though they are a good rebounding team, as you saw there by Riverside. Riverside has multiple players that have five rebounds a game. So their whole team can go and get the basketball. Seven to two. Ventura has the lead. Two minutes gone by. Here's Yui. She's fouled on the up. And she'll head to the line for two. Jasmine is a freshman from Cerritos High School. 
on the season, averaging nine points, 68% from the line. She gets four rebounds a ball game. First team foul. All OAC, one of four for the Cypress team, who has the co-player of the year on their team. And if you don't know who that is, you haven't been following Cypress basketball on Chargers Live and SportsnetUSA.net. That's Ashley Hawkins, and also the best offensive player also went to Hawkins. Both free throws by Uli is good. So it is seven to four. And we'll talk about those uh, awards in the postseason a little bit later. We'll get to it at halftime, Mark, because it's interesting on how they played out. Here's Glover, Gallic, and she traveled. And that's good defense as you cut somebody off, you make them pick up their ball as they're looking for an opening at the same time. Hawkins comes over to assist with the double team and gets the turnover. 7.35 to play in the first quarter. Hawkins in the front court. Alvarez. Williams, deep low post against Gallup. Didn't go to her. So they reset with 18. Hawkins feeling it for three. Long rebound trunk. She's in the lane. She puts it up with the left. She doesn't get it. Rebound Gallic. That's what she does. Gallic averages 14 rebounds a game. In the corner, Glover didn't take the three. Edelhart. She was on fire against Cerritos in their first round matchup on Wednesday. Cypress is in a zone. Kick out to Edelhart with 10. Jump stop to Glover. Torres Reyes already has one three. She gets to the elbow. Good defense by Uwe with one. Deep three. Edelhart, no. Rebound tapped out. Alvarez has it. All the way against Edelhart and scores. Good fake on the pass and cuts the lead to one. So seven to six, your score with 6.30. Just started here in the first quarter. Gallic in the lane and she traveled one more time. Good movement by Williams on the interior. However, if Gallic stays up, all she's got to do is raise up instead of getting a better shot. But when you look at the ladies down low and it's really a twosome that works down low for the Cypress team, you know, Corey and I were talking about the game and I said, hey, the non-talked about heroes as we get another travel. These, these referees came from the Mark Pavlovich School of Basketball, I guess, with the amount of traveling going on. But Corey, it really is. There, there's people that don't get heralded on this Cyprus team that have really been one of the reasons they have played so well since Oviedo went down with the injury. Two turnovers for Cyprus, two turnovers for Ventura. Here's Edelhart from 12. Her first two of the ball game, and it's a three-point lead for Ventura. Hawkins with a quick step. No good blocking or charge. They call it charge on Hawkins. Thought she had the shoulder and the head around Gallic. Good D by Kylie Gallic. And, of course, when Corey mentions Gallic, she's a double-double person, Corey. She scores in double figures, and you already said she gets those rebounds in double figures, throw in a few assists along the way and she is the leader of this Riverside team. Ton Don checks Ventura in for team. Ton Don steps in for Ashley Hawkins, and there's an offensive foul on Torres Reyes. Don making her presence known. Westminster High School product takes the charge. Three turnovers each in this first quarter. Nerves, Mark. baby, nerves. And every time, Mark, I say in this, I owe you a quarter. I'm already a buck and a half ahead in this game. 5.30, starting from now. Oh, okay. 5.30, first quarter. Uwe, free throw jumper, no good front rim, tapped out. Chase down, she didn't need to save it. And Corey, you watched her in her shot. She short-armed her shot. She just rushed a little during her shot with nobody on her. So Ventura beats Cerritos on Wednesday to get here. Gallic rims out. Rebound Williams. Reach in foul Glover. First personal, third team foul. Silly foul. 
which again, that's nerves. You get a little anxious, you want to get a bigger league, you do things you don't do during the season. Alexis Howery checks in. Jasmine Glover checks out Howery. 5'6 freshman from Ventura High School. Trung, Uwe, Don Williams, and Alvarez. Trung all the way, high arc, no rebound. Gallic taps to herself. And again, Mark, they've missed two on the interior that I've counted thus far. I think three, actually. Torres short with it. Gallic again. Gallic is 5'11", Mark, but she plays much bigger. D3 by Torres Reyes. Nothing but a thing for Torres Reyes. Her second three, she's got six points, and it is 12 to 6. 4.30 remains. Here's Trung again in the lane with the left. That's four in the key that they've missed. 4.11 to play. Cruz Lisberg in the lane, dragged her foot, doesn't matter. They say she kept the pivot. She's got four. And it's a Ventura eight-point lead with 4.03 to play in the first quarter. This is Chargers Live on SportsNetUSA.net. That time taken by Cypress. Well, when we look at the stats all the way across, pretty well these teams are even, Corey, when you look at them. Cypress, 70 points a game. Ventura, 67 points a game. Field goal percentage, 39%. 43 for Ventura. Three-point percentage, 31% for Ventura, 29% for the Cypress Chargers. Free throw, 62% to 69%. You said that Ventura was in the top nine or four? For nine, ninth in the state in free throw percentage as a team. As a team, looking out there. So numbers, they're pretty close to each other. Rebounds a game, Cypress 42, Ventura 30. Eight. Trung in the lane again, steps back, got away with a travel, but the up and step through by Tao. You like her aggressiveness out there, scoring out of the timeout. Pressure in the backcourt, Uwe and Don, good spin by Lisberg, excuse me, Cruz Lisberg. Almost a turnover. Edelberg with the save at near court, excuse me, half court. Gallic, got to take that shot. She does, misses, rebound, mistiming the jump, but it rolls out to Don. 14 to eight, your score. Uwe with the crossover in the lane, misses, rebound tapped out. Loose ball foul on Don. And you watch the Ventura players. The ball is put up, everybody goes and attacks the basket. So many times you will see when somebody shoots, Defenders like to take off and get that Luke Robitaille break on somebody on the floor. This is where Ventura does not do that. Bianca Olega out of Rancho Alamito to 5'5 sophomore. Edelhard with a jump stop. She does that mark better than anybody I've seen this year. 16 to 8, eight point lead for the. Pirates and Olega misses, rebound. Torres Reyes comes out of the pack. Here's Howery, two on one. Cruz Lisberg back to Howery, foul from behind, no call. Doesn't matter, she connects. And Ventura running away in this first quarter, 18 to eight, Olega for three. That is good, quiets the storm. And that's what they'll need, three point shooting from Olega. Cruz Lisberg, offensive foul. Crown takes the charge. And they need that three-point shooter without the most prolific record setter, single season career in Jalen Oviedo, who's out tonight, been out for the last few games. As Hawkins checks back in. Alvarez, Olega, Williams, and Uwe. Hey Corey, when you look at what Hawkins is doing, sometimes you get your star player trying to press just a little too much out there instead of setting everybody else up on the floor. Offensive game in full effect for Jasmine. 18 to 13 now, five point lead for Ventura with Torres Reyes. 
Edelhart, Howery in the lane. Cruz Lisberg, Gallup, kick out. Good ball movement. Free throw line in that zone. In, out, stays in for Gallup. Beautiful ball movement by Ventura, Corey. Six people touched that. And then finally went back to the original ball hander who makes the basket. And that was Cruz Lisberg actually. Rebound, fought for, controlled by Edelhart. Here they come, three on one. Cruz Lisberg on the right side. And they are finishing at the rim. She's got eight points. And that's the difference in the ball game. It's 22 to 13, 124 to play first quarter. Ventura is finishing at the rim. Cypress is not as Hawkins misses the layup on the right side. That's five missed in the key from point blank range. Nine point lead for the Pirates. Fast paced first quarter. 2-3 zone for Cypress, something we haven't seen a lot of this year from the Chargers. And you were talking about what's going to change in this matchup. This is it. There's a jump ball. Alvarez ties it up, staying there with the Pirates. Well, Corey, when you put that zone defense on there, you're saying to the other team, we're going to make you shoot it out. Realize when you look at Ventura, they pass the ball quickly. They're getting these wonderful little 12 to 13 foot shots for two points. They're down in the key making baskets. Well, all of their shots have originated from 12 feet and in, and they're making them pay. They've made two threes as well. Hawkins from the elbow. She connects. She's got four. 24-15, under 30 to play. Three second differential between the game and the shot clock. Torres Reyes, high screen by Gallic. Kick out, Edelhart in the lane to Williams. Against Williams is Gallic. With nine. Cruz Lisberg wants a screen from 17. No good, rebound, fought for. On the ground is Williams with three. With two. Count if it goes, does not go. Off the desperation heave. On a quick first quarter, the Pirates have a nine-point lead over the Chargers at 24 to 15. This is Chargers Live on SportsnetUSA.net. We've got a great crowd here at Don Johnson Court enjoying this second round CCCAA playoff matchup. Well, you got to realize this Ventura school is historic in women's basketball. Realize that they had 28 consecutive Western State Conference Northern Division titles from 91 to 218, Corey. Nearly 85% in their games they played, they have been victorious. An overall record, 877 to 155, an 858 winning percentage of its games with the coach that currently is with them. And then when you look at it, 96, 97, 2000, 2001, 2002, 10, and 14. Seven straight state champion games that they played in at one stretch. There is the heritage of women's basketball with this Ventura team. And I tell you what, you got a coach that says, hey, you know what? I'm doing what I would do for fun. I just happen to luck out and I'm doing the game and I'm getting paid for what I'm doing. It transcends to his coaching style and to his players. They have come away big in this game so far. 24 to 15 as we head for the second quarter. Cyprus needs to find a little magic to get back in this game. Speaking of magic, I'm gonna turn it back over to the voice for Cyprus basketball, Corey Naylor. So 24-15 to start the second quarter. Trung and Hawkins. Alvarez, Carly Bush now in the ball game. 22, Hawkins straight away three. Starts the second quarter right. If you're the Chargers faithful. And she's got seven. Cuts the lead to six. Steal by Uwe, who's the fifth on the floor. Here's Alvarez going to the lane against Gallic. No good. Rebound last touch by the Pirates. And the Pirates last touched it is Alina Olivo, number four in black. Edelhart stays in, Gallic, Cruz Lisberg, and also in for the first time is Tiernan Phillips. Out goes Olivo, in comes Howery. 
Nice pass. Alvarez finishes this time with the bank. She's got four, and it's a four-point lead for the Pirates. Coach B on the sideline. Animated is not the word, Mark, for Coach B on the sideline. Twenty-four, twenty, nine, twelve. Here's Gallic against Bush. No good. Good defense by Carly. Hawkins with the fight. She has the ball in the attacking zone with the right-handed dribble. Screen. Hawkins mark went off for fifty-one in that first matchup. Uli on the right wing. Cypress won the first one in the LA Valley Tournament, 75 to 67 in OT, seven to shoot, Uwe for three. Long, rebound, bounce, last touch should be Cypress ball. I thought they were gonna say Pyro, I was gonna say Pirates ball. Uh, I, I really did, I think that the last touch was by a Cypress player, but it comes down to the person on the floor who makes those decisions. Strong inbounds at Bush. She scores. She does not score a lot, but she's get two there and cuts the Pirate lead to two at 24-22. With 8.28 to play in this set, I owe you a quarter. In the second quarter. Cruz Lisberg, Gallic against Bush. Good defense by Bush, better offense by Gallic. She's got four. 26-22, Ventura. Cypress shot 34% in that first game. Uwe gets fouled on the arm. She'll head back to the line where she made two earlier. And she's got four points already. Like we were saying, Cypress shot 34% in that first game. Ventura shot 37%. From three, Cypress was only four of 19. Ventura was a little bit worse at three of 19. Uwe stays perfect at the line. So we'll see if Ventura goes back to Gallic because you do have Carly Bush down there. She take advantage of her inexperience. Carly Bush playing very physical for the Chargers. Rebound on the miss, 26-23. Hawkins with that head and shoulder fake in the lane. Rims out, Bush reach in foul, loose ball foul on Carly. Her first personal first team foul in the second quarter. 7.48 to play as Joanna Stroud will check in. Carly Bush will check out. And Jasmine Glover checks in. Howery out. Full court pressure. Ventura also has four players, Mark, that can handle the ball. So when you press them, you're doing something just to hopefully slow them down and slowly get them into their offense. But there it is again, good ball movement in the triangle. And there's three by Edelhart for seven points in the ball game and it's 29-23. Hand off to Jasmine. Both teams shooting threes better in, this, in the first half. Hawkins, good D by Cruz Lisberg. 10 on the shot. High screen by Stroud, kick out, Alvarez, Trung, 17-footer. Tau, 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 29-25. This game has been a demonstration of ball movement, Corey, finding the open shooter and giving them an opportunity to make it to the basket. And this game has been an execution of two very, very good coaches. Missed by Glover, loose ball foul by Cruz Lisberg. I mean, you have the legend over here in Merchitech, and you have the up and coming in Imaku, who took over for a legend. Two well coached teams. Yeah, and they're getting quality players, Corey, that when you talk to both the coaches, they tell you that they're getting well coached players that are coming to them from the high school level, which has made their job just a little bit easier on the floor. Hawkins bounce back from Cal State Northridge. And there's a travel or a push. They call it a push on Cruz Lisberg. That's her second personal foul. Third team foul of the second quarter. 
Hawkins, we said 51, 11, and two in the first game. Tan Don in, Tao Trung in, out. Alvarez had four, Ui had five, or excuse me, 10. Gallic had 27 and 14 in the first matchup. Edelhart had 12, Torres Reyes had 10. Those players were in double figures. The only players in double figures for the Pirates in that first matchup. Hawkins left it short. Gallic with another rebound. That's rebound number six. Edelhart to Torres Reyes. 29-25 is the score and six minutes to play, second quarter. Alvarez picks up. Glover in the box, saved by Gallic in the lane, falling away. And she has not missed from there. Actually, she's missed once. Yeah, you watch the way she works her way down low. She brings the ball. She dishes it off. Corey, she breaks to the basket. She gets the ball. She dishes it off. She gets lower to the basket. On each pass, she gets within two more feet of the rim and then finishes off the play. She's got six points and six rebounds. Uwe in the lane all day. Charge as Glover stepped in and takes it. Uwe needs to jump stop and get that. And on the floor, another foul. This one goes on Alexia Alvarez. So Alexi has her first personal. That's the third team foul. Almost a steal in the backcourt. Edelhart, she carried, splitting the double team. So taking that ball, carrying it over, you get your hand underneath, you roll it on the top after you take a little half a step or more. It's like taking that picnic basket and just trying to be a little sweet with it. Hawkins, got to finish. Misses from 17, reach in foul on Don. That's her second. Fourth team foul. And not only are the women in action tonight in the second round as Yankee, Yankee Samton checks in, Alvarez, Stroud, Uwe, and Hawkins, Glover, Howery, Edelhart, Torres, Reyes, and Gallic. In the backcourt, 30 second shot clock, 10 seconds to get it over, still by Yamton and she stepped out of bounds. Is this a fast moving game or what? I mean, it just feels like it just started and we're almost to the end of the first half. 4.57 to be exact. Six point lead for the Pirates. Inbound, double teamed up top. Hand off to Edelhart, open three, Torres Reyes, she's got two, make it three. She's got nine points, doing her mama proud, 34-25. 440 to play. Her mom was a state player of the year, 95 for Ventura, and a state title MVP of the tournament. Uwe just doing Uwe things and gets fouled, heads back to the line. So tradition at Ventura with Torres Reyes. Marina Torres Reyes, state player of the year, conference player of the year, MVP of the tournament back in 95, 96. And then you come play at the same school where your mom did all that with a coach that coached your mother and looked at you as a player. And, you know, that's a lot of pressure as a player. See, I don't look at it as pressure. I look at it as following in the footsteps with no pressure. Different type of players, 34-27. And you have a coach who realizes different type of player. Still, Alvarez off the board. She's got six, and it's 34 to 29. Ventura with the five-point lead. Down low, Glover all alone gets it back, and there's a turnover. 
good pressure. They sped him up just a little bit. Uwe, bounce pass, Williams. You got to know your personnel on the break. 4.06 to play. Olivo checks in for Howard. But every time Ben Torres sort of edges away, Corey Nalen, it's like that person that goes back to the snack bar and gets that baby Ruth before you do. That's exactly what Cypress is doing. We're going to get a foul on the play. A push on Alvarez, or they got Uwe. Yeah, Uwe went up in the air and came down on the player who ducked underneath her while she was in the air. See, that's not a foul on Uwe. Uh, that's what I thought. I'm stepping in and creating the contact as the offensive player. It should have been against the offensive player. It should have been a no call. And well, Ventura uh, turns it over. But if you're going to call the foul, I call it on the offensive player. You've got to allow the defensive player to have a place to land. Torres Reyes connects on the first. Coach B walks over and talks to the official. And hits the second. So back to a seven point lead at 36 to 29. Alvarez Ventura got off to that hot start mark in the first quarter, 14 to six lead. And they've kept it there throughout this first half. Hold on Olivo and that's the fifth team foul on the Pirates. So Lexi will head to the line. The kinesiology major wants to be an athletic trainer. But here's the thing, you talked about the lead by Ventura. One thing we've discovered with this Cypress basketball team, there is absolutely no quit. Let me take a cliche. There's no quit in this team, Corey, and they don't expect their star player to bail them out. This is a team that wins as a team. Even though you have the offensive player in the year on your team, nobody says to her, you have to go win it for us. Lexi, one of two from the line. 36-30, they are down. Here's Gallic in the backcourt. Edelhart. Torres Reyes sets up in the corner, Oliva. Olivo, again, there's Gallic. And again, 12 to 15 feet. These shots are strictly money. 38-30, that's a disciplined offense, Mark, when you have open threes, but a better shot 12 to 15 feet away. Hawkins in and out. Rebound Reyes, excuse me, Torres Reyes. Approaching three minutes, there's Torres Reyes. Blocked from behind by Alvarez, and they call a foul on Lexi. Oh no, 3.03 to play in the second. Nah, that's clean. Torres Ray is at the line. She was an all-conference player, first team, Buena High School, 5'6", sophomore, 12 and a half points, four and a half rebounds, two and a half assists, two steals per contest. Mrs. Wright. Trung back in, Olega. Also for Cypress and Carly Bush. Second drops. Nine point lead for the Pirates. Hawkins pushed by Edelhart. No call with contact. Doesn't matter. She's got nine. Reyes, Edelhart has a three from that spot. Samton, Gallic, double teamed at that spot, Mark. Torres Reyes gets a step, pulls up in 15. Long rebound, Gallic just taller than everybody. Second chance opportunity. Yeah, and this is why she's got that double-double. And again, watch the way she attacks the basket offensively. But her footwork is phenomenal. She's got 10 points and seven rebounds. And it's back to a nine point lead. Hawkins working hard for her points and she gets fouled. They call a travel on the pinball move as one Ventura bumps her, the second Ventura player bumps her, and she gets a travel. Good defense by the Pirates. Like they said, if they don't call it, it ain't a foul. 
two minutes left to go in the first quarter, excuse me, second quarter. Ball movement has the Cypress Chargers chasing. No, rebound, Gallic number eight. We're gonna check those stats, offensive rebounds for Ventura at the half. Ventura finished third in the Western State North Conference. Edelhard again in the lane. Hawkins with the rebound with 130 left. In, this fir in the first half, Hawkins gets fouled on the pass, but since they're in the bonus, she'll head to the line for free throws. She shoots five free throws a game. This is her first time there tonight. 23 points per game, that's tied all time for Cyprus. Well, when you look at Ventura, Corey, the, way, the reason they're playing so well is normally they're at a negative one for assist to turnover ratio. In tonight's game, they are on the positive for assist to turnover ratio in this game. So that has allowed them to have that seven point lead in this game with 120 to go. Almost a steal, last touch. They say by Olega. And they gonna, overturn it. They overturn it. So it was last touched by Howery. And we thought it went off of her foot. So they'll reset the shot clock back to 30. Cypress's ball trailing by seven. And we're going to get a timeout on the floor. So a timeout on the floor. It's Cypress 41, Ventura 34 here on Chargers Live and Sportsnet USA. Dot net. Exciting basketball. The men are playing right now too, Corey. I don't know what updates you've got. They're down by 21 to Citrus, 35 to 20, 35 to 14 in the first half. Citrus all over. They came back and beat Long Beach. I'm not sure they're going to be the top five team in the state. We hope they do and come back and get a run to end the ball game. Ventura is shooting 60% from the field. Cypress 42. Four for seven from three. There's kind of the difference. Free throws, eight of 10 for Cypress, three of four from Ventura. 10 turnovers for Ventura. So actually their assist to turnover ratio, they've got 10 turnovers, 11 assists. Olega out of the timeout with Hawkins. And I think that's how well they're playing because it hasn't mattered. Hawkins for three, no good. Not the shot you want out of the timeout as they're down by seven. 60 seconds to play in the half. And again, they're not rushing their offense. Everything is controlled, systematic, methodical. And converted, 44-34. Their biggest lead matched at 10. Sam 10 for three, oh. Jan Key, a Beckman High School freshman. Last touch by Cypress. 29.4, shot clock is off. Both shot clocks are off. 44-37, Ventura has held the lead. It was tied at two to two. Gallic throws it down, chased down by Olivo to Olega with 27. Let's see if they hold for the last shot, Hawkins, and they will. They can cut it to four with a three. With the deuce, they get 39. That cuts it to five with a 10. High screen by Bush. Hawkins working in the lane. Good defense by Edelhart with the body. No good. Chase down. They call it jump ball, but that's the half. Touch fouls, and we like what the officials are doing, Mark. Those touch fouls are not being called. 
Yeah, they're letting them play, and we'll see if they're gonna just say that's the end of the half. And I think that's what they're gonna do is bring it to center court and say the half does end. So we come to the end of the first half, Corey Nalen. It's Ventura 44, Cypress 37 here on Chargers Live and Sportsnet, USA.net. Corey, a very entertaining first half. Ventura has been on fire is the best way to put it. I think the best thing about them, I like how they have moved the ball so quickly against the Cypress defense, worked their way down to that 15-foot range and been able to knock down 15-footers. And then, like you said, then when somebody's going down low, they've sprinkled in enough three-pointers to give themselves that seven-point lead. Yeah, we said coming in here, this was the best matchup of the second round on either side. The men on the South SoCal or the NorCal men or women on the SoCal and NorCal. This was the best matchup of the second round, and it's proving that right now. When you look at some of the other matchups going around right now, Corey, got any updates on the men or the women? Let's see, around the second round for the women, Glendale beat Allen Hancock. They advance. So they await the winner of Palomar and Rio Hondo. Irvine Valley, the OEC stays perfect with the win over Mount San Jacinto. So IVC, and here's the problem I have with the ranking with the Brackets. They go play, they're going to play an OEC team, aren't they? They're going to play the winner of Orange Coast and L.A. Trey Tech. Yeah. When you have four teams from one conference, one team should be in one quadrant, another team should be in another quadrant, another team should be in the third quadrant, and the fourth team should be in the fourth quadrant. That's the way it should be done. But now you get IVC and OCC, if they don't get upset, you get them to go to the to state. I never liked that, but that's what happens when you're the best conference in the state. Oh well, that's what happens. Up north, Sequoias beat San Mateo 73-54. So they await the winners of City College of San Francisco and Lassen. Staying up north, Butte was all over Merced 96-54. So Folsom Link and Lake and Feather River is their or their next matchup. At the half, Moore Park is beating LA Valley 33 to 23. The winner of this game will face the winner of that matchup. And Mount Sac. Mount Sac is a team who didn't have the best year. Didn't have a normal Mount Sac team, but they're beating Pasadena in the second quarter by 12. And at halftime, Sierra and Fresno City might be the second best matchup between last year's winner in the state, Sierra, and Fresno City. Orange Coast, well, started at the third, 48-39 over L.A. Trade Tech. Riverside, we talked about this, didn't we? We said Riverside had a chance. Yep. We said Riverside, if they got a chance to shoot well, they got a chance to get there. Yep. They got a... Decent coach and Coach Verb. Yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. Ah, she's all right. She's okay. Yeah. 35-21 over Long Beach in the second quarter. Palomar, number one team in the state. SoCal, 42-26 over Rio Hondo at half. And that's the update on the women's side. Shall we flip it to the weaker gender? <laughs> We can. Okay, well, let's do that. Let's see. Let's go to that gender that can learn a little about fundamental basketball from the ladies. So we start up North Columbia over Contra Costa. 65-54. That is a final. So they will wait the winner of Butte and City College of San Francisco. And they got the winner already. Uh, City College of San Francisco beat Butte by 30, 99, 69. At the half, Mount San Jacinto is up over LA Harbor, the number six seed, down losing to the number 11 seed at half, 44 to 40. East LA 
is also on SportsNetUSA.net. The men, 36-25 over Riverside in the first half, two minutes remaining. San Jose, 39, Fresno City, 36. That's at half. At halftime in the Citrus-Cypress matchup, well, Cypress is down by 19, 40 to 21. They need a huge second half run. Pasadena at the half over San Diego Miramar, 30 to 23. And Ventura on the men's side. Winning over Santiago Canyon, 38 to 32, start of the second half. Let's see, we also up north, Porterville 30-19 over West Valley. San Bernardino Valley at halftime over Saddleback. Saddleback has some work to do in the second half. They're down by 11, 40 to 29. And Fullerton, the number one team in the state, handling business in the first half. 47-31 over West LA. We'll end it, well, a couple more. Copper Mountain gets in. We're gonna talk about this in a minute, Mark. Over San Diego City, or excuse me, down to San Diego City. 38 to 31. So let's get into it real quick. I was going to go somewhere else at halftime. We're going to stay with the men for just a moment, then we're going to get to the uh, women's side. Five teams make it from the Orange Empire Conference. Should have been six. Should have been six. Should have been six. There's no way you can tell me that a team that is over 500, I think they were 10 and 6, OCC, in the toughest conference in the state. They were plus record, and I think it was 18 and 10. Yes. They don't make the playoffs. How can you say that? Well, LA Southwest was 12 and 14. We're not disparaging any team. But when you have a 12 and 14 record, you don't make the playoffs. Copper Mountain. Even though they won 16 and 12 overall, and they played Cerritos and beat them. Not saying Orange Coast would have beat them, beat Cerritos, but they should have been there. Those are just two. Those are the two teams that shouldn't have been in there, rather than OCC. And they expanded the field too, Corey. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, if you expand the field, you should take to do that. That means you're not going to leave the better teams out. Now, I know people are going to say, yeah, but you two guys broadcast for an OEC team. With us, it's really sight lines. If you, if you happen to hear us and the way we do games, we'll tell you when a team's better and when a team's worse. And it doesn't matter if it's our Cypress team or other teams, be it Saddleback that we work for. We told you how Saddleback started the season and said they were ugly looking and ended up making the playoffs. So, Corey, I've got to agree with you. I agreed with you when you said six because of the conference they play in. Yeah, we did a show last week, and I didn't even I didn't look at it because I assumed because the brackets came out and I didn't have them with me that OCC made it because they were in there because Riverside, in the conference standings, there were two teams tied. Riverside gets in. They were below OCC. Riverside gets in, Orange Coast does not. Under 500 team gets in, oh, Orange Coast Conference does not. When you expand the tournament to 24 teams, this cannot happen. Yeah, I agree with you. And you know my feeling about teams that are under 500. I know you look at me weird and say, but, but you know my feeling on that. I'm sorry if you don't have a winning record, if there's a team out there that does, you don't get in. They do. Long yeah. Beach was 16 and 12. You know, that's how I look at it. Cuesta was 15 and 13. Really? I, okay. I, I have problems with losing records. You know that. All right. Let, let, so I'll go ahead and get off of that real, real quick. We don't want to make this a downer because this is an excellent first half between Ventura and Cypress. Cypress down seven in this second round matchup. And again, the crowd is here. The crowd is live. The crowd wants to see it. And you know it's a playoff matchup when the blinds are closed on the left side so you just can't walk in here for free. Got to give up the cash and watch good, get the good basketball. You know, before you go to the women's side, Corey, I tell you what, there can't be anything stranger when we talk about basketball that all of a sudden if you're a coach and you go to an auto shop and you're walking around to that auto shop and when you're at the auto shop you happen to look over 
and you see an auto technician who is looking in the window of a car that is raised on the auto lift and realize, hmm, I wonder if this young man is any good at the game of basketball. And you go over and talk to him. You're a uh, former Cypress assistant coach. You try to convince him that maybe you should try out for a basketball team and you help him get rolled at Cypress College and then why he's there, he helped Cypress claim a state championship in 1980, transfers to UCLA, and then eventually this gentleman that you met at an auto repair shop becomes a professional basketball player and starts playing for the Utah Jazz. And that's where he played for 11 seasons, establishing an NBA record for the most block shots per game and the most block shots fourth overall yeah we're talking about somebody who's been loved here at cypress college and i tell you what i'd like to be able to go out and find somebody who's seven foot four just working in my car and say you know what perry webster uses somebody because that's what cypress did he's got records and corey mark eaton who has been known here for years a loved cypress alumni a loved ucla alumni and then playing for the utah jazz has been enshrined into the CCC Hall of Fame. So Mark, hopefully you're watching the men's game and the women's game when you get an opportunity. Congratulations for, for being another person from Cypress College. And you know, Corey, he didn't go there by himself because if you walk out and you're looking at Brad Picklers, and we talk about Brad, we'll be doing softball for Brad here on SportsNetUSA.net. Right next door is his brother's field. Scott Pickler's field where he won multiple state championships. And I guess if you're going to get a basketball player in, you might as well get a baseball player. What I didn't know about Trevor Hoffman is he didn't start off as a pitcher. He started off as a shortstop. And that was his career here at Cypress College. And he was with Scott Pickler from 85 to 86, two-time all OEC player and received a scholarship from Arizona where he went to play and he was an all Pac-10 at that time. First team honoree with the Wildcats in 1988. A batting average at 371. And then he got drafted by the Cincinnati Reds, went to the minor leagues. Of course, most people know him as a San Diego Padre and he is still a consultant for the baseball team here at Cypress College, another Cypress alumni that is now in the CCCAA Hall of Fame. I don't accept that he played for another team other than the Padres or, or Cypress. Those are the only two teams he ever played for. Okay. All right. So just want to congratulate both of them, gentlemen. And one guy I have to just bring up, because we talk to him all the time. Jim Satoris got elected into the Hall of Fame, and we have the pleasure of talking to Jim. Every time we're doing football, Corey, he sees us, walks up like he's known us forever, which he has because we're so darn old. And Jim, congratulations. You deserve to be in the Hall of Fame, and good for you to be there and being enshrined. So three people that we know that are now, again, in the CCC AA Hall of Fame. So much for other sports. I guess we ought to go back to this game in women's basketball here on Chargers Live and Sportsnet, USA.net. So you look at these two teams, and Ventura has that seven point lead as we sit at half. Orange Coast, Cypress, Irvine Valley, and Riverside made the tournament. Orange Coast led the way with 11 wins 11 and 1, Cypress 9 and 3, Irvine Valley 8 and 4, Riverside 6 and 6. Excuse me, yeah, six and six. In the Western State North, they had three. Moore Park, 12 and 0. Allen Hancock, nine and three. Ventura, at eight and four, finished third. That's a quality conference between, because Moore Park can win it all at any, any year. Allen Hancock, Hancock lost to Glendale, so they're out. That leaves Ventura against Cypress here. 
Cypress does not want to be the first OEC team to be knocked out. You mentioned the co-players of the year. I thought it was going to be one player of the year. I thought it was going to be Megan McIntyre. I really did. 19 points, 8 rebounds, 8 assists. I thought she was going to be the player of the year. And I thought Ashley Hawkins was going to be the offensive player of the year. I didn't think it was going to be co-players of the year and Ashley winning the best offensive player. Uh, defensive player of the year was Kennedy Pucci out of Irvine Valley. And the coach of the year was Sammy Doucette in the OEC. So that's the way the OEC team looked. Hawkins, first team. Jasmine Uwe, first team all-conference. Lexi Alvarez and Jalen Oviedo made second team all-conference for Cyprus. And for in the Western State, Gallic, Torres Reyes, and Edelhart all made the all-conference team from the Western State. So I got to ask you, I mean, would you, would, do you think it should have been co MVP player, just from your point of view, not no right or wrong, just I'm asking you. Uh, those were the two best players in the conference this year. If I had to choose one, Ashley's probably my favorite player this year that I've seen. And that's out of all the games we've done, she's been my favorite player to watch this year. Megan McIntyre, because of, and here's where you get in the teams and what's whatever, I don't really like to do that, but Megan McIntyre would have chosen as the player of the year, and uh, Hawkins was hands down the best offensive player. Well, I don't fault either decision. Both players deserved it, and that's why their teams are in the tournament. Start the second half. Ten minutes on the clock in this third quarter. Ventura has it with Gallic inbounding, Edelhart. Torres Reyes in the backcourt. Looked like an over and back mark. She caught it in the front court. went to the backcourt. It should have been a turnover. Howery gets the start in the second half. That's Alexis, number 22, and Glover. That's Jasmine, number three, in black. Here's Howery. Torres Reyes. Cypress. Moot in the man-to-man -man now. Person-to-person -person defense on that far side with six. They played the first half in the 2-3 zone. Torres Reyes, scoop shot, no, rebound, loose ball foul. They call a 24-second violation. The scoop didn't hit rim. Good defense by the Chargers. Tao Trung will inbound it. Ashley Hawkins, Jasmine Uwe, Joanna Stroud, and Lexi Alvarez. Olivo in, Howery out. Chargers Live and SportsnetUSA.net. The third quarter has started in this second round CCCAA playoff matchup. Hawkins, Trung, open three. Alvarez with 12. Running hook, no. Rebound by Gallic. She's got to be in double figures with rebounds, or is that number nine? Actually, she is. That's number 12. 10 points, 11 rebounds. 10 points, 12 rebounds now for Gallic. 15 to shoot. Another double-double for her. That's what she averages during the year. Double-double points and rebounds. Torres Reyes doesn't use the screen. Good defense by Uwe. Forces a bad shot. Didn't hit rim again, but that is good on the putback by Jasmine Glover chasing down the missed shot. And, Corey, this is what I was saying, where they get four players with five or four rebounds apiece a game. That's an extra 20 down low. Trung, that's her third miss underneath jump ball. Stays with the Chargers. Hawkins, she passed up an open shot. Trung has got to make those. That's three underneath that she's missed. Well, you, you mentioned at least five in the first half that they didn't finish. That's a 10-point differential in a game. Inbound to Alvarez. Against Gallic, she has the matchup she wants on the right side. Puts it up. No good. She's short. Rebound last touch by Gallic. Ferocious underneath with eight minutes to play in the third. Ashley Hawkins had 11 points in the first in the first half. Two rebounds, two assists. We talked about Ashley earlier today. Running, cutting, Uwe. Jasmine now has nine points. That'll hard. Kick out Torres Reyes. We talked about her and didn't care if she shot the ball 40 times. She needs to score for Cypress to win the game. There's a push off by Torres Reyes, pounding defense. 
by the Chargers. Well, here's what's real interesting, because we were talking about it, and I said, it's going to be the role players that win this game. And you immediately looked at me and said, no, you're wrong. It's going to be the star that wins it for this player. And you felt this was one of those games where the star needed, and, you know, if people don't like that I'm calling her that, well, MVP player of the year. The star needed to win this for their team. Yeah, if she goes 20 of 35, 20 of 55, she needs to put points on the board for the Chargers. 7.30 to play. She has it. Dumps down low to Stroud. No good. Rebound. Stroud battling for it. Gallic on the floor. Tied up. Going to the team in black with the orange numbers. Again, Corey Neal and I cannot stand that rule. You beat each other up down low and you don't get rewarded for it. Leading the way for Ventura, Torres Reyes 12, Edelhart 10, Gallic 10. Gallic with those 12 rebounds. Cruz Lisberg, Lisberg has eight. Glover has four. Behind the back dribble, Edelhart, elbow, no, Uwe. Pulls down the board, running with nine points in the ball game. Seven point lead for Ventura, seven minutes to play. Uwe in the lane, kick out. Alvarez gotta make it. Big three by Alvarez cuts the lead to four, 46 to 42, full court. Cruz Lisberg, all purpose player. Short, rebound, Alvarez traveled. Hawkins did a flyby, Alvarez couldn't put it down. Alvarez with 10 points now, two rebounds and two steals. And I'm gonna say, Corey, this game gets won or lost on who gets more second chance hustle plays. And oh. Cypress gets the call as they call an offensive foul, Corey. I thought it was a block. But the referee sees it a different way. But I, I'm going to go out of limb now and say, Riverside, uh, Riverside, I don't know why I keep calling them. I think it's the uniforms that does it to me. Black Ventura, and orange. Black yeah. and orange. Ventura keeps getting the second or the hustle shot rebounds. If Cypress can pick that up in this half, they'll easily tie them and make this a dogfight down to the end. Stroud on the curl off glass. There he is, Joanna. Her first bucket of the ball game. 46 to 44, they're down by two. Ventura was steady in the first half and there's a steal almost. Backcourt violation if it's touched, jump it up. Going Chargers way. Chargers picking up the pressure with exactly six minutes to play in the third quarter and the crowd likes it. Hey Corey, what a great crowd there is tonight. Let's give the crowd a lot of love. Beautiful turnout here at Cypress College. The fans have come out to support the women and their opportunity to win a state championship. Timeout taken by Ventura with six minutes to play in the third quarter. Ventura, a two-point lead, 46-44. to 44. Chargers just got live on SportsnetUSA.net. And I'm going to give a lot of love to Coach B. She's been up here in the booth with us. What an intense woman. What a charming woman on the court when you get a chance to score. I think her infectious charm with nastiness thrown in for a little taste rolls over to her players. Well, you asked me what does Coach B change in this playoff matchup? I said she's not going to change anything. What does she do in the first half? She, she plays exclusively a zone, which we haven't seen all year except maybe in a couple moments, but not an entire first half. They stayed in deficit of seven. Now in the second half, they begin with man-to-man, person-to-person 46-44, so that person-to-person -person has really picked up that pace for the Chargers. Trung, Uwe, Hawkins, Alvarez, Carly Bush checks in. One of the few times Corey Nalen admits he was wrong on I the air. I didn't say I was wrong. <laughs> I said Bush, loose ball, push in the back. I never said I was wrong. I know, you never do. <laughs> I didn't say I said she wasn't going to change a thing. But she did. She played zone exclusively, but she played zone already. I really think her, her attitude easily rolls to the women she coaches. Yeah, it does. 
And yeah, I was mistaken. I wasn't wrong. 46, 44, 545 to play. <laughs> Gallic at the elbow, working against Carly Bush. Up and in. She finishes once more. She's got 14. Good play, 48, 44. Cypress is in. That's how they have to finish at the hoop. Hawkins, three. Long, rebound, chase down, Cruz Lisberg. And that was a good shot by Ashley. You like her taking that shot. That would have given her more confidence if it went down. 5.06 to play third quarter. Cruz Lisberg keeps it, wants to spin. She does over Hawkins and nestles home. And again, five feet from the basket. Ventura is comfortable going down low, refusing to take the three unless it's a rarity. Alvarez in the lane. She can't finish underneath Gallic with another rebound. So the difference, Glover works on Alvarez. Alvarez does not reach. Gallic drives on Bush again. A step late, blocking foul. Can't finish, but she'll head to the line for two. And again, Mark, the difference in the ball game is finishing at the cup. Corey, if you go back to the Alvarez shot, if you watch what she did, she forces contact and assumes she's going to get the call. Throws it up without really looking to finish because she figures the referee's going to bail her out. They haven't done that in this game tonight. When you watch Ventura go to the basket, you don't see anybody saying, hey, if I get hacked, I'm going to stop going up. I'm going to finish my shot and make that basket. If I get an opportunity for a three-point play, terrific. If I don't, then I'll knock down some free throws. And it's funny we mentioned that because 20 points in the paint for Ventura, 18 for Cypress. And it doesn't and, feel that way. And you're thinking, how can that be the difference in the ballgame? But again, the finishing. Cypress has been in the paint a lot, but they haven't finished. So you get five of those shots that easily could be reflected in the score as Gallic makes the first free throw. She's got 13 points. Excellent ball game thus far. Both teams playing the game like it's supposed to be played. Both free throws are in for Gallic. And she's got 14 points, and the score is 52 to 44. And traveled by Tom Don, who checks in in an eight point lead. So six quick points scored by the Pirates after Cypress cut it to two. And Cypress trying to find that unit who's going to get them tied or to the lead as Amaya Williams checks in. Touched by Tron, deflected out with Don, Hawkins, and Alvarez. They changed the shot clock to 30. Should have stayed at 26 because it did not change possession. It was just knocked out of bounds by Cypress. The winner of this matchup gets Moore Parker, LA Valley. Torres Reyes, Cruz Lisberg. She worked well against Cerritos. And Edelberg, Edelberg, Edelhart, excuse me, misses from that left wing. Trung in the lane, kick out to Don. Pulls up from five, another miss. Chase down, Ton, last touch by Gallic. Nope, last touch by Ton. Corey Cypress is just rushing their shots just a little too fast. They get there and they feel like they've got to knock down the shot in X amount of seconds. They're only down by eight. Get within four for well, that they, fourth quarter. Well, they were within two, Mark and six straight by Ventura. So Ventura has weathered the storm. They haven't rushed. Gallic reverses to Edelhart in the lane with the jump stop. No travel, Gallic in the lane, blocked by Williams. Short, good defense by Amaya. Here's Alvarez on the right side, double team. No, pass to Williams, they're gonna say off the glass and the Williams says, I like it for her first two. So you don't call that a missed shot. You just call that a pass off the glass. Great assist. 
in the backcourt. Bianca Olega checks in for Cypress. She's wearing number three in white. Ventura again, patience. Who's Lisberg with the handle? Glover with eight. Torres Reyes operating in the lane with the left. No, Williams, good box out. Here's Alvarez in the front court to Hawkins. Battle Hart doing a nice job on Ashley Trung in the lane. She's pushed by Glover, no good. You got to finish. Kick by Olega. So Tao in the lane hasn't connected. She's got four points. Ashley is four for 13 from the field. Four for 14 from the field. Tao is two for seven from the field. Edel Hart short on the push. Hawkins, let's see if she gets in the lane and gets contact mark, gets to the free throw line, get her rhythm with the right hand of dribble. She's in there on the floor on Edelhart for Edelhart. That'll be her first personal foul. Williams on the inbound. Hawkins, again, get that second foul. Screen by Williams in the lane one more time with the reach in. Alvarez for three. No, rebound Gallic. Mark, she's like Courtney Paris down there, gobbling up everything down low. And Courtney Paris for Oklahoma, she had like 58 straight, 60 straight games with a double-double. Or a Nice drive for Torres Reyes. She misses Gallic with another rebound. Count the bucket. They call Williams with the loose ball foul. Gallic went over the back. But again, hard work pays off. Gallic yes. now with 16 points, 7 of 11 from the field, 16 rebounds. Right now, she is the player of the game. 54 46, 136 to play, third quarter. And it is 55 to 46. Fifty-five, forty-six, one thirty. 130. Hawkins. Stroud down low. And that is a blocking foul as Gallic was falling before the contact. 120 left to go in the third quarter. If you're Cypress again, and I know people are going to say, Mark, you're so repetitive, but you only have to stay within shooting distance. And I, that's where I say you don't have to get it all back now. You don't have to make it an even end of the third period. Stay within a distance. Don't rush things. 120. Stroud. Has three points. Six points on the season. Freshman from Santa Fe Springs. Gets both the journalism major, cuts the lead to six, seven, excuse me, 55 to 48. Kick ball by Lisberg, but no call on a behind the back dribble. 20 on the shot clock. Good patience by the Pirates. Edelhart backs it out. 10 on the shot clock, under a minute to play in the third. Edelhart. Cruz Lisberg with the fake from 16. Off left, rebound. Instead of getting a trunk, lets it go, and Glover chases it down, and there's a timeout taken by Ventura with 47 seconds left. And that's the difference, Mark. Ventura, every possession they're going after, didn't let that go out. Trung waited for it to go out of bounds. Glover said, no, nah, I think I'm going to get that. Second chance opportunity coming. Yeah, we had talked about the hustle plays in the first half, and you go and get those second opportunities, and that's what Ventura has done, which gives them the opportunity 
to go to the basket more often. We talked about a team that we said, well, might get out rebounded in this game. Only averages about 39 rebounds a game. Cypress exactly at 42. But what happens, Corey, if you can get four more rebounds, five more rebounds than your average in a game, you're taking those away. It's actually a 10 rebound switch. I'm taking five more rebounds away from you. You're getting five less. That's a plus 10. That gives me 10 extra shots as we keep getting a hippity hop on our screen here, on our computer screen, that we'll see what happens as they come back out. So it says rebounds 25 to 16. Ventura out rebounding Cypress. Coaches are down at the scores table trying to find out who's got what foul-wise. Well, out of the timeout, Etta Hart, Gallic might as well go down to her in the lane, turn around on Stroud, misses Sampton with the rebound. 33, four second differential between the game and the shot clock. Hawkins, driving, elbow. Let's see if that gets her going. She's got 13. 55-50, almost a steal in the backcourt. And there's a kick by Alvarez. And Tura still has possession. But that restarts the count in the backcourt. So if you had them for almost a 10 second violation, now it starts all over again because you kicked the ball out of bounds. 17.1 left in the third. Five point lead for the Pirates on the inbound, Edelhart. Gets the step, gets the sideline, and her Jets up to Torres Reyes. Steps into a three. No, rebound, Gallic again. That's 17. Torres Reyes at the half, the third. Count the bucket. Second chance opportunity makes Cypress pay. So instead of being down by five at the half, Cypress is down by eight. This is Chargers Live on sportsnetusa.net at the third end of the third quarter. All Ventura by eight, also in the OEC. 257 in the third on the women's side. Riverside 45, Long Beach 36, Orange Coast 65, LA Trade Tech 56. That's with 549 to play in the ball game. And as we've heard already, Irvine Valley advanced. On the men's side, do we want to check that score? We do. Are you sure? I'm sure. 9.14 left to go in the game. Citrus, 64. Cypress, 43. Not looking good for the Cypress men as they're down by 21. Blake Ballard is leading the way with 19 points. Grant C has 10. Hady Asaley, Hady, Hady Asaley, non-factor, three points, eight rebounds. Did we have a cat walk into the booth or something? I uh, think it, it's the weather change. Oh, okay. Corey's, Corey's starting to swell up because allergies out here. Also on the men's side in the OEC, Santiago Canyon, 59. Ventura, 52. Wow. Saddleback not coming back against San Bernardino. 54 to 34, 10, 23 to play. Fullerton's going to beat West L.A. 77-53 unless West L.A. has a tremendous, tremendous comeback. Starting the fourth quarter, Ventura has the ball and an eight-point lead. Edelhart, Torres Reyes, Cruz Lisberg, Glover, and Gallic. Torres Reyes working on Uwe. Gallic again in the lane. Stroud catches. Torres Reyes misses from the free throw line. Rebound chased down by Lexi. Lexi, Joanna, Tal, dangerous pass, gets it back, scoop shot and in. She realized that the last second she had somebody open down low, Corey. She tried to dish it off. She throws it to four Ventura players, and it comes right back to her for an easy layup. Down low, Gallic doesn't turn and face. Instead, there's a three-second. 
illegal screen by Kylie Gallick. And I thought your call of three seconds was more apropos, Corey, because they had camped out, filled the fire, and was having some schmores when the play was played. So Cruz Lisberg out of the ball game, 58-52, just started the final frame in this second round matchup. Hawkins has 13. Uwe, Stroud, Trung, Alvarez. Stroud gets his step all the way, finishes. That's a matchup that they can exploit the rest of the ball game. Alvarez almost is still too much hands and fouls Olivo in the backcourt and quickly here's Torres Reyes and and Cruz Lisberg back in the ball game for Ventura and coach B is down there on the court saying hey you've got to use your feet for defense you can't use your hands you've got to get in front of them with their feet as if she were out there getting ready to play love that from a coach on any level body foul blocking Alvarez that's their number three on Lexi That's number four on Lexi, Mark. First team foul, Sampton checks back in. Stroud, Hawkins, Trung, and Uwe. 8.43 to play. Cruz Lisberg at the line where she shoots 59%, seven points, three rebounds. So we'll round up, we'll give her eight for the season. She had a big 23 against Cerritos in their first round matchup. <laughs> Calmly. <laughs> 13 points. Back to a six point lead. She checks out. Olivo back in with Glover and Howery on D. Hawkins with a double high. Trung trying to maneuver. Stroud at the pivot on the right side. Tripped up, no good. Strung with the rebound. Loses it out of bounds. And offense for defense substitutions for Ventura. Cruz Lisberg and Torres Reyes back in the ball game. Olivo and Howery back out on offense for Cypress. Here's where Uwe and Hawkins really have to take charge and get going to the bucket. Reach and foul on Sampton. And this is where you can't make those little touch fouls going down the court. Second team foul, second personal. Chargers have four timeouts remaining, Pirates have two. Gallic at the left elbow, right elbow, excuse me. Over Stroud in the lane, misses badly. Here's Trung. And there's a timeout, a full timeout taken by Coach B in Cypress with 8.03 to play. Fourth quarter, fourth and final quarter, possibly. Charges live in SportsNetUSA.net, second round of the CCCAA playoffs. So if Cypress wins, we'll let you know at the end of the game if they win, and Corey sees the other teams that, where they're lining up, if they will have a possible home game or not if they win this game tonight. Don't forget, the games are not far away. Cypress softball here on SportsNetUSA.net. Got a little Cerrito softball planned on SportsNetUSA.net. Might be heading down to Saddleback for a little Saddleback baseball all on SportsNetUSA.net. Ed Ford, Corey Nalen. I'm the old guy that's just having the time of his life. Ryan Osborne, some of the other names. Jerry Roquet that have been involved. Albert Robles for all our broadcasts here on sportsnetusa.net. 7.04 remaining, Moorpark, L.A. Valley, Moorpark 53, L.A. Valley 41. 
So Moore Park is the higher seed they would be hosting if they win, no matter who wins this ball game. And again, Moore Park, Ventura, same conference. Got to mix these up a little bit better. 60 to 54, 8.03 to play. Hawkins, Uwe, Olega, Trung, Stroud. The Chargers in white and the blue numbers. Trung working on Howery. Hawkins, open three. Schwackums. 60 57. Poked away. Hawkins down by three. In the front court. Ashley all the way blocking. Foul. Count the bucket. No, it does not go. Thought she was going to be shooting the three point play the old fashion way, Mark. To tie it up. Yes. 7.43 to play. A little burst of energy from both squads. Yeah. Good action. Got to stay off the red myself, though. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did we not tell the Ventura coach when he was talking about being a gym rat? I said, you're talking to your counterpart down here with Corey Nalen. Hawkins coming alive in the second half. Cuts the lead to two. Stays at two. She's got 17. Cruz Lisberg running one on one against Stroud in the lane with the right. No, Stroud. Cypress with a chance to take or to tie with the two. A three point play mark would give them their first lead of the ball game. High screen reached by Edelhart. Kick out Trung in the corner. Allegos open, puts it up. Another miss down low. Last touch by Gallic. Corey, I'm sorry, you can't take that shot. Over the shoulder, back to the basket, in your head. Hey, it looks pretty, but it is not a sure drive to the basket. Olega was open from the corner at the three-point line, and that's her shot. Inbound, Hawkins, three-point. Bring it up! And their first lead of the ball game, she's got a dub. 61-60, down low, two on one, Olivo, Glover, over Hawkins, no, rebound, chase down, Ashley. Olega, Trung, Hawkins, Sunder, seven minutes to play. It got a little exciting up in the Don Johnson court. UCLA, high post. Hawkins, reaching by Edelhart, gets in the lane, reaching in, puts it up, count the bucket! One shot coming, Ashley Hawkins taking over. 63 to 60. 64. Star Rapawa, 644. Left to go in the ball game. Three point lead for Cyprus. Ventura hit that low. They missed three shots on the interior. All game long, those have been going in. Cyprus making them pay. That stick to it a miss. That Coach B has her squad playing with, looking to extend their first leads of the ball game to four with 6.44. And Corey, every once in a while, you gotta be a little lucky. Or a lot lucky. You make your own luck, but Mark, that was a lot of make. That was a lot of, a lot of love from <laughs> the gods of basketball. 23 on the floor, the crowd is going wild. Edelhart trying to calm them down. Stolen, Stroud. Hawkins in the backcourt. The defensive intensity is picked up at Don Johnson Court. Cypress. Remember the first matchup went to overtime between these two squads. Down low, Stroud. Good position. Yes, it is. Roll player, baby. Roll player. Doing big things. 66 to 60. Torres Reyes. Gets baseline, leaves it. Cruz Lisberg, three. Short, air ball coming the other way. That was a huge shot both ways. Timeout taken by Ventura. 5.54 to play in this ball game. Cypress with a six point lead, 66 to 60. And winning time comes down. You've got CIF winners right here with Stroud. CIF winner with Hawkins. They made the last three plays. 
they've got a six point lead. And Corey, this is where it comes to when people talk about teams. You talk about a superstar that's out there, one of, if not the best in the OEC, but then you lose one of your better stars in Obedo because of an unfortunate injury. And all of a sudden those players that maybe touch the ball once in a while, because you have so many people that can touch the ball, come in and do like Stroud does, do like Williams does, do like Carly Bush does. They play their three minutes, they give you eight minutes for three on the floor because they add four points on the game and your superstar has now got a chorus so when they all sing at the same time, it's nothing but harmony. I like the way you explain that. We'll talk after the ball game. 66-60. Hawkins has 23 points. She's got eight in the fourth quarter. Stroud also playing well. She's got the last bucket. But it's their defense that they've never wavered from. And those shots that were falling in the first half in Ventura haven't been timely in falling here in the fourth quarter. So let's see if Ventura can come up when they do get the ball some sort of backdoor play. They call that timeout. They have one remaining. Cypress with three. Trung and Hawkins. Sampton and Uwe. Stroud, the five on the floor. And what you like about Hawkins as well is she is unselfish. Down low. Good defense by Kylie Gallick. Tied up. Staying with the Chargers. But again, Jasmine Uwe is one of those players. They lost Oviedo, but when you have four players who can handle the rock and get to the lane, that's what they've been doing. Everybody, good team effort by both teams tonight. That's why this is such a great game. Uwe against Torres Reyes. Jasmine, you should keep this. With 10, with eight, she's at her spot, elbow extended. Eight-point lead for Cypress. 5-23 remaining. Gallic in the front court. Almost a steal by Sampton. Taken away. Got the arm trying to take her watch. She keeps it. Third, fourth team foul. Cruz Lisberg, Torres Reyes, Glover, Edelhart coming to meet the ball. Gallic has been in there all game. She has not been out. You can't keep her out if she's got a double-double. Edelhart, Gallic keeps it. Trung with five, with four. Edelhart can shoot that three. She steps back, short, out of bounds. Excellent defense. You might want to go back in at Gallic, Mark. 17 points, 18 rebounds. She's been devastating on the block. In the key, five feet away. Ventura's going to have to find a way to get back to that. Under five to play. Eight-point lead for the Chargers. They've taken control seemingly in this fourth quarter with this double high post. Ashley Hawkins with the right-handed dribble. Kick out. Sampton with 10. Sampton in the corner. Dunks down. Stroud. Offensive foul by Stroud and a technical on Joanna Stroud as she didn't like the call with the little forearm. As she was walking away, big technical on Joanna. So two shots coming to Ventura. This is what they need to quiet the storm. And, and Corey, it's a, it's a questionable bump down low, not going to say it was a bad call. It's a questionable call down low. So you know players because of intensity are going to chirp. Misses the first free throw long. I think a referee needs to understand that and if they hear something, they shut their ears off to it. Uh, I'm not so sure about that. Second free throw drops for Gallagher. And they keep the ball. Yes, they do. So an opportunity for a four-point possession as they are down by seven. Defense! 
Gallic at the elbow. Stroud, strong D, hand off to Uwe in the corner. Operates with the left, no rebound. Stroud working hard, taken by Glover out of midair. Cruz Lisberg, back to Glover on Sampton, all the way. Misses underneath, Stroud with the box out. Stroud has come to play, Corey, and the thing is, she has gone and got the ball. She is a different level player in this game. Joanna, journalism major, Mark. She knows how to write a story. CIF all-conference, CIF winner. Here's Hawkins. Working, kick out, Sampton for three. No, rebound. Edelhart, go all the way, get to the rim, lays it up and in. 68-63, Cypress with the five-point lead with 3.23 left in the game. Keeps it, it's Hawkins in the corner, Uwe. Short, rebound, Gallic. That's rebound number 19. Ventura, looks like they've weathered this storm mark. Three minutes to play. If they score here, you know that they have weathered this storm. Cruz, Lisberg, no, rebound. Uwe, over the back, chased down. Glover, tied up, stays with the Ventura Pirates. Gallic, 18 points, 19 rebounds. Torres Reyes, 15. Edelhart, 12. Timeout Cypress, 30 second timeout with 2.51 to play in the ball game and a Cypress lead by five. Charges live in SportsNetUSA.net. So Edelhart and Cruz Lisberg, 12 points each. Gallic leading the way. Hawkins, 23. Three rebounds, three assists. Jasmine Uwe, 13. Lexi Alvarez, 12 points. Mark, Cypress has been doing this without Lexi on the floor. She's got four personal fouls. She's a defensive specialist. She's got five rebounds, three assists. Is now the time you bring her in as a sophomore to try to close this out and get a defensive stop? I do. I, I, I don't save her for the last second or if for some strange reason, Corey, thinking we might go into overtime. I go out and win the game now. If I can get on the board, get up by seven with two minutes to go and play hard nosed defense, there's a good chance that I can walk away with this game. Chargers are in the bonus. They're 12 of 15 from the line. Ventura is 9 of 11. Fresh 30 on the inbound. That's five, no? Inbound to Gallic. Alvarez is back in now. Trunk working on Gallic. Cypress in a zone. Go to the 2-3, taking time off the clock. Torres Reyes, Gallic in the corner. She drives. Pulls up, no good, long rebound, Uwe. Three team fouls for Ventura. Excuse me, three teams, so Ventura's in the bonus. Excuse me, not Cypress yet. That's okay, you're a homer. A little bit, sometimes. Hawkins. With 10. With the left, step back, 4-3. Crowd's going wild. 26 for the player of the year. 71, 63, under two. Highlight reel. Down low, jump. Torres Reyes, long with the rebound. Trunk chases it down, tripped up by Gallic. Fourth team foul. With 148 to play. Second round. This is why we love basketball. 148 remaining in this ball game. Ashley Hawkins sugar footed them. Just left them and stepped back for three. So Olivo and Howery will check in. Cruz Lisberg and Torres Reyes will check out. Not a completely deep team, so they got to sub in, but Gallic has played every minute of this ball game. Hawkins had a rest early. Trung, Hawkins, Alvarez, 
and Uwe chase down. Alvarez all the way. Joanna Stroud finishes. She's got seven points, and it's 73 to 63. Edelhart all the way for two. Quiets the crowd for just a moment. Eight point lead for the Chargers. In the backcourt with 130. Olivo wanted to commit a foul. Alvarez, here's Hawkins, fouled by Olivo. That's the fifth team foul. So it'll send Ashley to the line. The charity strike for Miss Hawkins. Business major. Wants to be a college basketball coach. Has a crowd shouts MVP. Four year varsity player. 3A player of the year. Conference player of the year. Co player of the year. It's what you expected. Hawkins, 23 points on the year. 75% from the line. And I like Coach B convinced her team as the first free throw is made. We make this a foot race in the fourth quarter, which we had talked about here up in the booth, Corey. There's a chance we'll win if she makes two in a row. 28 for Ashley. 75 to 65, 120 remaining. Over and back, they missed the call, but that's okay. Edelhart turns it over. <laughs> Hawkins in the front court. She had 11 points at half. She's got 28 points now. One on one with a minute left. 10 point lead with 10 seconds. Edelhart crosses over. Kick. Yui. Bucket. All the way, Reyes, Torres Reyes lays it in, cuts it back to 10, and the final timeout taken by the Pirates? No, timeout taken by Cypress. 37 seconds, no such thing as a 10-point play in the game of basketball. So let us put, Corey, I, I'm a, so you, got, you got stats in front of you, so we can get to those before we call it a game. Just tell me, the ones that I talk about as the role players, what significant stats they may have on the floor right what now. What team you want? I want Cypress, okay. naturally. Hawkins with 28. Three rebounds, four assists. Jasmine Uwe, 15. Lexi Alvarez, 12. They needed to step up. They did big time. Stroud, eight points, two rebounds. But more importantly, her offensive and defensive presence on the interior. Tao Trung, four points, six rebounds, four assists. Olega with three, Sampton with three, Bush with two, Williams with two. But it's not the points. It's the effort that they put in this ball game. It's the effort that they were down by 12 and never gave up. They switched and turned it around in the fourth quarter. And now they've got a 10-point lead. Here's Hawkins pushed from behind. She heads back to the line looking for points 29 and 30. And the player who needed to score no matter what in the second half has done her thing. And the thing that's interesting, I know I, I, I talked about the one shot that was very lucky, yet I got my partner next to me that will tell you that above average players create their own luck in a game. So if you're stumbling going down like Ashley was and she flips it up and goes in the basket, Curry will say, yeah, you might call it a lucky shot but she creates and knows she's going to make that shot. So in her mind, it wasn't luck, it was skill. Torres Reyes steps into a three and misses, and that's gonna be academic, Mark. Cypress is going to advance to the third round with a 79-67 victory over Ventura. There's nine. There's eight. It looks like they're going to play more park. Last seven minutes of that one, they're up by 12. If LA Valley can't come up and get that upset, I wish this wasn't our last game we were doing. But what a last game it has been, if it is. Well, I tell you what, you want excitement, you want the crowd, you want a group of talented young women on both teams, Ventura 
and on Cyprus. That's what we got tonight. We walked and saw each other tonight. First thing we said to each other, Corey, let's hope we want Cyprus to win, but let's hope it's a good game. You couldn't add better drama in this game from both these teams and all the players that were involved. If this is our last game of basketball, well, we want to thank Coach B and her entire coaching staff for being so kind to us all year long. To the coaching staff over at Ventura, thank you very much. For Wes and the staff at Cypress, thank you for inviting us here at sportsatusa.net to come along the way. And for my gym rat partner, <laughs> Corey Nalen, I call him Mr. Homer. Corey, I'm going to let you sum up this game for us because I tell you what, I thought it was a game, yeah, of skill for Cyprus, but it was a really a game of will that won this game for the Cyprus Chargers on the ladies' side. Yes, it was. See, that's what I like, in-depth analysis. And in winning time and crunch time, they took over. In the first half, they played zone. We don't see them playing zone that extensively. Ventura ate them up. But it allowed them to rest a little bit in the second half. In the second half, they came out and they beat them with the person-to-person -person defense and they won the ball game. And like you said, they ran, they ran, they ran. They played defense and never wavered in what was their offensive and defense and game philosophy and their coach's philosophy. Yeah, and, and that was the thing. I mean, really for Coach Moore, Coach B, they just all decided this is the way you stay, and they come away with a big victory tonight here at home for Cypress on Chargers Live and SportsNetUSA.net. So a quick rundown of the other scores on the women's side in this tournament. Again, Glendale beats Allen Hancock to advance. Irvine Valley Mark. They advance out of the OEC, beating Mount San Jacinto. Moore Park, 63-54. They beat LA Valley. So Cypress will travel to Moore Park next week, March the 4th, in the third round for a chance to go to state. Mount Sac beats Pasadena. Orange Coast, they advance. So OEC, 3-0 tonight. 87-62 winners over LA Trade Tech. And with 34 seconds left, Long Beach has a two-point lead over Riverside. So once again, for everybody at Cypress, we want to thank you for a wonderful season of basketball, men and women for Ed Ford for always making sure we're up on the air. For Mark Pavlovich, I am Corey Nayland. Once again, Cypress 79, Ventura 67. This has been Chargers Live on SportsNetUSA.net.